Well, welcome everyone. Um, this is our second session of our Wednesday service, midweek service. And um, it's meant for the family of Gospel Life, but uh, it's open to viewership from, from all over the place. So you're welcome to join us and enjoy the Word of God explained to us. Currently, we are talking about repentance and faith. Um, Dependence and faith. That's that's our 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 topic. Um, two very key words that are biblical but also religious. And in fact, what happens with most of us is is that uh, uh, we we tend to abuse biblical words. We tend to even overuse uh, biblical words. And what happens when we overuse biblical words is we lose the meaning. The meaning is lost. The biblical meaning is lost. And when the biblical meaning is lost, we end up losing the message. In fact, we lose the radical nature um, or the radicalness of these words in our Bibles in the New Testament. And so we are trying to revisit two great words, two great concepts that cannot be separated from one another. Wherever there is repentance, there is faith, there is trust. And wherever there is trust, there is repentance. We are trying to redefine these two words for, for us today, for the church in the 21st century, for our thinking, for our renewal, uh, for our restoration. Because every time in history, every time there has been renewal, restoration, revival, or even every time people have been awakened um, into the things of God, these two aspects of the kingdom of God have been present. People have repented and repented rightly, but they have also trusted God and trusted Jesus for who he is and for what he has done for us and for our lives. Last week, we tried to define uh, repentance for us, and we're saying that in repentance, we are turning from something. We are turning from something. In fact, that's the meaning. That's the, that's the meaning of the Greek word, the Hebrew word, the Hebrew word shub, and the Greek word, the Greek word, Metanoia, metanoia. That the, the 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 literal meaning of these two words is to turn, to turn, to turn. And so, in repentance, we are turning from something, and we say we are we are turning from sin, we are turning from self, okay, and we are also turning from Satan, turning from sin. Sin rightly defined as missing the mark. Okay, we are turning from self because ourselves, without proper divination of Christ, without proper understanding of who we are, um, is sinful. And we are also turning from the ways of Satan. We are turning away from doctrines that are satanic, understandings that are satanic. We are turning away from that. And so, in, in repentance, we are turning away from these three uh, to something else. Okay, We are turning from these things to something else, basically to God. Now, in faith, that is in repentance. We are turning away from. In faith, we are turning to something. In repentance, we are turning from. In faith, we are turning towards. We are turning to. And what are we turning to in faith? We are turning to Christ himself. We are turning to Christ himself. We are turning to his ways, his ways, his methods, his way of thinking. So there's a scripture in, in, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, um, uh, where Paul is, is teaching us to, to embrace the mind of Christ. So that scripture says, it says, have this mind in you, which was also in Christ Jesus Christ. Okay. 
Um, so we are turning to Christ. We are turning to his ways. We are turning to his culture. Okay, culture loosely defined. Um, the culture that Christ came to establish, which is the culture of the kingdom. We are turning to his ways of thinking. Okay, this possession. We are turning to his ways of thinking. And basically, we are turning, we are embracing the mind of Christ. So in faith, we turn to Christ, to his ways, to his culture, to his mind. In repentance, we turn away from sin, from self, and from, from Satan. Okay? Um, I want us to go a little bit further and see one or two scriptures that are helpful in trying to understand repentance and faith repentance and faith so acts acts chapter 20 um paul is on his way to rome uh, you know that long voyage to rome that begins round about in chapter 20 2021 um and um somewhere along the way in his travel uh he said in, in a place called miletus he sends for the leaders of the church in Ephesus. So Miletus is not far away from Ephesus. And he sends for the leaders, the elders, the bishops uh, of the church in Ephesus. They come to meet him in, in, in Miletus. And so when they come, when they arrive, Paul speaks to him. Chapter 20, there's a lengthy discourse there. Paul is basically pouring himself to them and, and, and telling them he's going to go away and they may not see him again. But he reminds them of his ministry in Ephesus. And so in verse 20, he tells them, he tells them, you know that I did not hold back from proclaiming to you anything that would be helpful. And, um, and uh, he continues uh, and he says, and, and from teaching you publicly and from house to house. So, so Paul is basically describing his time in Ephesus. Uh, you know, when you read Acts, Paul spent about three and a half years in Ephesus with these brothers and he is now reminding them of his ministry while he was there. And he says, you know that I did not hold back from proclaiming to you anything that would be helpful and from teaching you publicly and from house to house, verse 21, testifying to both Jews and Greeks about repentance towards God, about repentance, repentance toward, toward God, okay, and then add faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, and faith in our Lord JC Jesus Christ. So here we have here we have Paul speaking about his three and a half years ministry in Ephesus, and how does he summarize it? This is how he summarizes it. His ministry there was about testifying, testifying testifying, witnessing to both Jews and Gentiles, okay, that's what he was doing. He was testifying, you know, publicly from house to house, um, testifying to both Jews and Greeks. And what was his testimony? His testimony was about repentance toward God, okay, and faith in Two important prepositions here. We have just defined that in repentance we turn away from sin, self, and Satan. Okay? But now Paul tells us something interesting here. That repentance is not just turning away from sin, self, and Satan. But it's turning away from those things. But now you turn away and at the same time you are turning toward so, repentance is turning away towards God. Okay? And as you turn away towards God, what is hap happening is you are having faith in, in our Lord Jesus Christ. So, repentance and faith go hand in hand. When you repent, then faith in Christ is built, is received, is welcomed. 
When there is faith in Jesus Christ, then there is repentance, there is a turn away from sin, self, and Satan, and a repentance towards God. Very helpful. Paul brings these two ideas together, these two concepts together. In fact, in summarizing his message, of course, Paul said so many things. Uh, he did not wake up every morning and the song he sang in Ephesus for three and a half years is repent towards God and have faith in Jesus Christ. Repent towards God and, you know, have faith in Jesus. No, basically he's summarizing his ministry, his word ministry in Ephesus. And what he is saying is every single day, every, every place I came teaching publicly and from house to house, what I did or what I was doing is I was, I was proclaiming repentance towards God. I was proclaiming the gospel so that people can turn towards God and have faith in Jesus Christ. And how do we do that? We do that in the mind and in our hearts. So we hear the gospel and our hearts and our minds are transformed. We receive God. In other words, we turn towards God and we also build faith. Our faith in Christ is built. It's a wonderful scripture there. But we will continue to see a little bit more about this, okay? Uh, uh, in the same, in the same chapter, okay? But here we have that close link between repentance and faith. The two work hand in hand. Uh, previously we have said that the two are the, are the, uh, you know, are the, are the two signs of the coin of conversion, the two signs of the coin of our salvation, repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. Okay. I want us to go down in the same chapter, if you have your Bible, go down to verse 26. Go down to verse 26 of the same chapter, Acts 20, verse 26. Here, um, Paul is... Um, Sorry, chapter 26, not chapter 20, chapter 26. And in chapter 26, something is happening here. Paul is before King Agrippa. And um, he is going to give a testimony of himself. He, of course, he is accused. He is in chains. And so King Agrippa, one of the kings of the Jews, uh, he calls him and he wants to hear uh, what he says concerning what he is being accused of. And so Paul is before King Agrippa and he is speaking. He will talk about how God called him, how God appeared to him and how God appointed him to be a minister, to be a gospel witness and, um, and uh, what he has seen or what he will be able to see, uh, what, God, what, what God will show him. And so God makes a promise to him as he tells as he speaks to King Agrippa and the people around there, he talks about how God and promised to rescue him and to protect him, especially from Jews and Gentiles, people who do not love the gospel, people who do not love God. So God is sending him to them. They, some of them will be hostile to the gospel. Some of them will fight back. But God promised to keep him and to rescue him from his hands. But in that chapter, chapter 26, verse 18, we find some very interesting words there about how Paul describes his mission, his work, his gospel ministry amongst the Jews and the Gentiles. So what does he say? Verse 18, he says, he has been sent, or God sent him to open their eyes. Their eyes, they are basically the eyes of the Jews and the Gentiles. To open their eyes so that they may turn. They may turn. So open open eyes and when when those eyes are opened so that they may turn okay eyes are opened and they will see and once they see what they are needed what god needs them to see they will be able to turn and the greek one there is the greek one epi epi epistrepo 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 that's a Greek one there, basically meaning to turn, to turn, to return, okay? So he says there, he was sent by God to open their eyes so that they may turn from, epistrephal, they may turn from darkness to light, 
Okay? And from the dominion of Satan to God. So, these people, Paul has been sent so that he may open the eyes of Jews and Gentiles so that they may turn. And what are they turning from? They may turn from darkness to light. Turn from darkness to light. Okay? Turn, turn from dominion of Satan of Satan, okay? Turn from the dominion of Satan to God. So, look at how repentance is, is explained right there. The gospel ministry, Paul's gospel ministry to Jews and Gentiles involves opening the eyes, of course, by bringing the word of God. When the word of God comes, it opens our eyes. So, opening the eyes of Jews and Gentiles once they are opened, and by the way, I need to remind you, and I've said this again and again, we don't see with our physical eyes. We see with our, we see with the mind, okay? And we will see this as we progress in this series. We see with our mind. We don't see with our, with our two eyes. When it comes to spiritual matters, when it comes to eternal realities and perspectives, we don't see with our eyes, our normal eyes, we see with our minds. We see with our minds. So, Paul's ministry is to open the minds of both Jews and Gentiles. Okay? Turning. Okay? By, by his gospel ministry, they will be able to see with their minds. And once they see with their minds, they will turn. And what are they turning from? They are turning from darkness to light. And they are turning from dominion of Satan to God. And, and once again, this is not physical darkness. It's not, it's not what we experience at night. This is, this is a, this is a mental darkness. It's a mental darkness. It's a mental darkness. A spiritual darkness. It's a spiritual darkness. Happens in the mind. Okay. So when the eyes are opened, then this mental darkness is dealt away with, dealt away with. And when the minds are opened, when we are able to see and to see clearly, then the we are able to understand the dominion of Satan. We are able to see how Satan rules the world, rules our minds, and we are able to turn away. So we are turning away here. We are turning away here. We are turning away there. And we are turning towards God or we are turning towards the light. Once again, light is not really what we experience during the day. This light is not what sun, the sun, the natural sun gives us. This is, this is spiritual light by which we are able to perceive with our minds realities about God. And when we see those realities, then we align not just our minds. We align our minds and our lives with the reality that we have now seen. And so the, so gospel ministry, at the very heart of the gospel ministry that Paul has been called to preach uh, to Jews and Gentiles, at the heart of that ministry is opening of our eyes, opening our minds, so that we may turn, so that we may see well. Once we see well, we will turn from darkness to light. God is light. So the Bible says, okay, so we are turning from Darkness. This is the kingdom of Satan. The dominion of Satan. Darkness. We are turning away from darkness. We are turning away from dominion of Satan. And where does that happen? Satan has his dominion right here in our head. In fact, those strongholds and, uh, and the high opinions I have found in our minds. And so we turn away from that and we turn towards God who is light. The father of all light. So wonderful scripture there. So, 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 and that's what I'm doing even here. Just like Paul, I'm trying to help you understand repentance so that you may turn away from darkness, things that are holding us, holding us captive, captives in our minds. Um, so that we may see well and so that we may begin to relate with God and one another well. Why? Because we have turned. Our minds have been addressed. We now live in the light. We now live in God. So Paul says, so that they may turn away from darkness to light and from the dominion of Satan to God. Okay? And then there's a so that there. So that they may receive forgiveness. They may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are being, have been sanctified by 
faith in me. That's very interesting. Very interesting there. Um, uh, that repentance, repentance, trying to understand that passage of scripture there, Paul is describing his ministry. He's describing his ministry. And he's saying, he's saying this, this opening, opening of eyes, and we have said opening of eyes is basically the opening of the mind, will lead to turning. Basically, will lead to repentance. Once we see well, we repent well. Once we repent well, so that they may receive forgiveness. Once we receive, once we repent well, we receive forgiveness. Sorry, we receive, uh, we receive forgiveness. In other words, our sins are erased. They are removed. We receive forgiveness. Okay? Forgiveness of sins. And we, we not only receive forgiveness, but we also receive an inheritance. Inheritance. An inheritance. Inheritance. Okay? Why? Because we have repented, we have received forgiveness and that has made us sons of God. That's what makes us sons of God. We receive, we repent. Repent must always include faith. And there's the word of faith at the end of that verse. Okay? So we repent. We receive the forgiveness. Okay? Repentance always includes faith. When there is repentance, there is faith. Where there is faith, there is repentance. That brings about forgiveness of our sins. So sins are removed. We become sons of God. And because we become sons of God, there is an inheritance for us. Inheritance, inheritance is something that belongs to, to sons in the natural and in the spiritual. Okay? So we receive inheritance together with other brothers and sisters who have repented Sins and, and their sins have been forgiven. So Paul continues in his statement to King Agrippa, and then he says, So, so King Agrippa, I did not prove disobedient to the heavenly vision. By heavenly vision, there, Paul means the calling to be a gospel minister, the calling to travel and to traverse the world, that world, the Mediterranean world of that time, and preaching the gospel, opening the eyes. Of Jews and Gentiles. He says, King Agrippa, I did not prove disobedient. I did not become disobedient to that vision. Verse 20 says, But I kept declaring both to those of Damascus first. Now, if you read the book of Acts, you will see that after Paul's conversion and commission, he went to Damascus. So he says there, uh, um, he, 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 he went on to preach those in Damascus first and also in Jerusalem. Again, you can find that in the book of Acts and also in Jerusalem and then throughout all the region of Judea. Okay? So he went into, into this city, Damascus, where he was going to persecute Christians. He preaches the gospel there and then he goes to Jerusalem for a short period and then he preached the gospel in all the regions of Judea and then it says there, and even to the Gentiles. So he's, just, he's giving us a geography there. When did he preach? Which regions did he go? Damascus first, Jerusalem, and then Judea. And then outside Jerusalem and Judea, we find the Gentiles. And even to the Gentiles. So that, okay, so now we have another purpose clause there. He says that, I preach to them, I declare to them, so that they should repent. Metanoia, so that they should repent. So that they should repent. That they should repent, okay? And turn to God. <laughs> this is very interesting. Turn to God. Turn to God. 
and then perform deeds appropriate to repentance. And then deeds, okay, do deeds that are in accordance with repentance. This is very interesting. Um, so his message, his message, his gospel ministry is so that both Jews and Gentiles may repent, metanoia, turn to God, okay, apostrophe, okay, and then perform deeds appropriate to repentance, metanoia, once again. That's a noun there. And so, and so, basically, really, without so much um, going into really these words, what is Paul doing? He is preaching the gospel so that people can repent, they can turn to God, and once they turn to God, their actions, deeds, there, right there, their actions will be in accordance with the repentance that has already happened in their minds. Wonderful scriptures there, illustrating what we are talking about. God opening our eyes through the gospel. God opening the eyes of our minds through the gospel so that we may repent and trust in Jesus Christ so that we may receive forgiveness of sins and that way we become sons of God and that way we are able to receive an inheritance in God and in Christ. In God and in Christ. So we have two different Greek ones there. Epistrepho and, and metanoia. In other words, Paul speaks of his, his, his mission as opening the eyes of the people so that they may turn away from the dark world into the light. They may turn away from the power of Satan to the power of God. Okay? So here, the turning is from darkness to light because we said there must the turning should always repentance should always be from something so here repentance is turning from darkness to light and we have said god is light okay um i've already talked about verse 20 the metanoia there and epistropo i will not i will not go back i will not go back to that so before we conclude our, our, our lesson today, let me, let me make a few conclusions, uh, a, few, a few comments. And um, I, one of the books that I've been reading of late, it's called 5Q. It's called 5Q. Um, you can find it in Amazon. A very interesting book by a missiologist called Alan Ash. Alan Ash. Now in this book, um, Alan Ash makes a very wonderful statement. I, 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 you know, I posted it on my blog a few, a few months ago. A very wonderful statement about repentance. This is what he says. I will read it. This is a quote from, from the book. He says, actually, repentance is the price required for any new learning in any domain. So I will read and explain what Alan means by this is a statement. So, right there, he says, repentance is the price required for any new learning in any domain. In other words, repentance is really about life. <laughs> so, so, there's Christian repentance, there's biblical repentance, but even outside the Bible, outside the world of the Bible, there's, there's repentance. In any, any domain, in any domain, there is repentance. Why? He says there, it is just that outside the church, it is called unlearning. Okay? So, so repentance, Alan Ash says, is something that happens with all life. With all life. Something that happens with all life. Okay? Only that, outside the church, okay? It happens in all life. But now, in the church, it's called repentance. In the church, it's called repentance. Now, outside church, outside, outside church, it is called unlearning. Okay. So, repentance is not something that uh, that uh, just happens within 
within the within the church. It's it's a concept. It's a concept that God expects on every human being. So it is just that outside the church, it's called unlearning. Okay. So whereas inside the church, it is called repentance. Alan continues to say, no one can learn who is not first prepared to unlearn. Okay, so if you want to learn, you must unlearn what you have learned first. Okay, and so he says, likewise, no one can grow in God unless they are willing to repent. And then he says, regularly. So growth, Christian growth, spiritual growth must happen as long as Christians, people who love the Lord, people who trust Jesus, are willing to repent regularly. Now, in the outside world, people who are growing, say, in computers, for example, in technology, in technology, if you only did your IT in 2005, and you do nothing between 2005 and 2020, then you become dated. You have become like a dinosaur. Your 2005 IT is not helpful at all. You need to have learned. You need to have continued to unlearn and learning new systems, new computer language, new configurations, new softwares. Okay? So in the world that is, in the world of technology, that is unlearning so that you may learn. In the world of church, it is willing to repent regularly. So to be able to learn something new, whether it is related to God or to other forms of learning, Alan says, we need to be willing to get, we need to be willing to let go of obsolete ideas and open our eyes. We, we already read that from Acts. And open our eyes and our hearts to be willing to grow, to mature, and get back on the road of discipleship and learn again. So, right there, right there, Alan is saying to be able to learn something new from the Word of God and how to cope with the confusing world that we are living in. So, something new, whether it is related to God or to other forms of education, other forms of learning, he proposes this, and this is so biblical. It's what we have just seen in the book of Acts, chapter 20 and chapter 26. He says, we need to be willing to let go of obsolete ideas. Obsolete. Obsolete. Obsolete ideas. Obsolete ideas. Um, what are these obsolete ideas about? Basically, obsolete ideas that we have learned in, in our growth. Some of us got saved when we were babies. I've heard people say, I got saved when I was 8, 10, 15, high school like myself. There are things we were taught, we were taught then, but they are not in accordance. They are not aligned with the word of God. Okay? And so we need to be able to unlearn, repent from those Obsolete ideas, obsolete ideas, and then open our eyes and our hearts to being willing to grow and mature. In other words, there is no Christian growth. There is no spiritual growth. There is no spiritual maturity without repentance. Okay? You know, you know some of you repented in, 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 in 1990 when you got saved. And, and, you know, for you, repentance is something that belongs to unbelievers. People who need to turn to, from their sins and come to God. If, if that is the way you think about repentance, then that is already an absolute, uh, obs obsolete idea. Obsolete idea. You need to change from that. You need to unlearn that and learn what repentance is biblically. Um, if for you, you were born again, 1990, you know, 1992, you know, you always say 1995, thank God he came to me and I was born again. 
if if that is your testimony, that testimony is dated. It's dated. Okay? It is outdated. You need to have a current testimony of what God is doing for you, in you, through you, now, now. And that involves that involves repentance. Okay? So, so we need to be willing to grow, to mature, and get back on the road of discipleship and learn again. That is something that is current. Present. That happens now. Not 1995 when you say I got born again. Not even three weeks ago. It's current. It's now. It's what God is doing in your life right now. It's the things you are realizing that they are not aligned with the word of God. And you are moving away from those things. Whether in word, in thought, in action. You are moving away. You are turning away from those things. And you are turning towards what God is saying at the present. Through his word. And in his word. Okay. So Alan continues to say, the learner, and I want to believe that you are that learner, the learner, the student, the Christian, the disciple, the son of God, the learner means to venture out of fixed paths. Okay? We need to venture. The learner means to venture out of fixed paths. What does Alan mean by fixed paths? What he means by that is is uh, is uh, you have always thought that uh, that uh, Christianity should be like this. Okay? So you have this wooden view of how Christianity should look like. But then you read the word of God and you realize that in fact the Bible teaches something different. In fact the Bible teaches something new. So you need to learn to fend out of fixed paths. There are ways of discipleships Discipleship that has been, that have been taught, that are dated, completely outdated. When you go into the Bible, you see something different. Maybe there are ways you have been taught to grow and to learn scripture that are completely dated, that are completely out of place. And for you, they are fixed in the mind. In fact, they have become high opinions. They have become strongholds in your mind that, that, you know, I must pray every single morning. Before I leave my house, otherwise something bad will happen to me. You see, that may sound Christian, but the truth is that's, that's, that's not true. That's not what the Bible teaches. Okay. So, so a, a good Christian, a good son of God, a good disciple of Jesus Christ needs to learn to venture out of fixed paths. Okay. Into the unknown, into the unknown, Alan says. And not allow their heart and their head to be stunted by mere routine. You know, mere routine. Morning, noon, evening. Morning, noon, evening. Mere routine. There's no life. Not allow their heart and head to be stunted by mere routine. This is especially true of religious routine. And there's so much religious routine everywhere. Our discipleship, in fact, is full of disciple, full of routine. Okay, so he says. In fact, I would suggest that uh, that new breakthroughs are only gained by those who break out of the arbitrary boundaries that have been set by mere convention. That's why they are called breakthroughs. So let me read for you the old the old um, quote. Uh, if you were, uh, if you would want to capture what Alan says in the whole quotation, okay. So this is what he says. He says, actually, repentance is the price required for any new learning in any domain. It is just that outside the church, it is called unlearning, whereas inside the church, it is called repentance. No one can learn who is not first prepared to unlearn. Likewise, no one can grow in God unless they are willing to repent regularly. He says, to be able to learn something new, whether it is related to God or to other forms of learning, we need to be willing to let go of obsolete ideas and open our eyes and our hearts to being willing to grow, mature, and get back on the road of discipleship and learn again. The learner needs to venture out of fixed paths into the unknown 
and not allow their hearts and head to be standard by mere routine. This is especially true of religious routine. In fact, I would suggest that deal breakthroughs are only gained by those who break out of the arbitrary boundaries that have been set by mere convention. That's why they are called breakthroughs. Wonderful quotation there by, by Alan Ash, um, a great man that I've come to admire, uh, to admire and I'm reading him quite, quite often. So you see, for many of us, repentance means I did something wrong, so I need to confess my sins. And it stops there. And that's why your life doesn't change. Because you are always, you are always confessing your sins. Okay? And you, and, and that's where it ends. It is, it is that medieval routine that, uh, that came to us, especially through Catholicism, Roman Catholicism, whereby, you know, a man sits somewhere, we have done wrong, we go to them, we confess our sins, and that's the end of the story. So for many of us, that's what repentance has been. But true repentance is more than that. Of course, we must confess our sins where we have not hit the mark. We need to talk to God about it. We can even talk to brothers and sisters about it. But repentance goes beyond that. And I'm closing now, and I'm saying this. Repentance is a complete reorienting your life. Repentance is a complete reorientation of your life, your thought life. Basic, the basic meaning of metanoia, to turn. The Hebrew word should, turning, turning, turning around. Okay. Repentance is more than confession of sins. It is turning from something and then back to God. It is to be converted. That's why we are converted daily, daily. Please stop talking about your conversion in 1989. Talk about your conversion today and yesterday. Talk about your being born again today by the word of God. The one we are talking about right now. You are being born again. If you are saying yes to the word of God, you are being renewed. You are being born again from above. Okay? So it is conversion. It is to be born again. Repentance, as Alan Ash says, is a reflamation. You are being reflamed. You are receiving a new flame of mind. It's reflamation. You, it's metanoia. You are able to see. You are able to see. It's, it's receiving new glasses, new goggles by which you can see things, the things of God, the things about your life, yourself, understanding Satan, repentance. It is literally thinking above or even beyond what you are thinking now. Repentance is a whole paradigm shift. You are completely shifted from the way you have always understood life to something else, totally different, sometimes new and radical. Repentance is having your mind blow. Okay, that's repentance. And friends, we are living in a day and time when we are finding ourselves in all sorts of situations and difficult circumstances and life is generally hard for many of us, especially in the day of COVID-19. Economically, socially, politically. Can, can you imagine? Can you imagine? You know, previously, previously, when somebody died, say in our offices in Nairobi, say in our company, somebody dies. Do you know a whole group of people traveled all the way, say to Meru, to Kisi, to Eldoret, to Nyeri? To Kitui, a whole contingent of five vehicles, sometimes ten vehicles, sometimes the whole company closes and everybody travels to go and bury the body of this dead person. But you realize, like COVID-19 has just told us, yeah, that's fine, but not necessary because it's no longer happening. It's not happening. And so here we are. We are now rethinking 
the whole dent and burying and funeral thing. Now, if you remain in the old, you will find yourself dated. You, so you need to embrace the new. So, so in our minds, we need, we need to reframe our minds and begin to think, okay, so when somebody dies, what do we do? Because if the government says that only 100 people, the whole of your family may be more than that. So what do we do? And many people have been forced to rethink these things. Dependence means a radical change. A radical change. A transformation, no. A transformation that comes through very serious radical change and renewal. For those of us who love God and who love the purposes of God for the world, for those of us who love Jesus and they want to see Jesus' purposes for the world going ahead, we must be willing to pay the cost and we must be willing to adjust, to reflame ourselves according to God's original purpose and intent. That is the calling I'm making upon all of us who are listening to me. If you love Jesus, begin to adjust now. Don't wait tomorrow. Begin to adjust your mind and your heart with, the, with God's original purpose and intention. Thank you for listening to me today. It was wonderful having to share these thoughts from the word of God with you. May God bless you and may God help you to continue thinking about, uh, about these things um, and adjusting rightly and adjusting accordingly. In other words, repenting every day and every minute of our lives as the word of God comes to us. May God bless you and give you a good week. I will see you here once again next week with the same theme, repentance and faith. God bless you. Thank you.